Hi and welcome to episode 6 of my DIY smart home series. So far, we've set up our main system using Home Assistant, connected some Zigbee devices, created some more advanced automations, and have remote access up and running. In this episode, I want to walk you through some of the ways that you can interact with your smart home tag, namely with different types of switches. Now, I say types, but I kind of have four main options in mind. Scene changer switches like these, light switch replacements, motion sensors, and door and window sensors. There are undoubtedly more options here, but I think that these four should be a pretty decent starting point. And speaking of starting points, let me explain these scene switcher or scene changer switches. These look like a pretty standard wall switch. They're pretty much the same size as a standard faceplate or light switch fixture, at least here in the UK, but they don't have the, the junk in the trunk a, a normal light switch has. They are only the thickness of a, a faceplate. They include double-sided tape to stick them pretty much anywhere you like, and they're remarkably versatile. If you slide the back panel off, you'll find the CR2430 battery location. Annoyingly, these didn't come with any, you have to buy them separately, but they do just slide in. Then you hold down any of the buttons for something like 8 seconds to put it into pairing mode. Then, as usual, you'll need to head to Home Assistant, Zigbee Home Automation, Add Device, then let it find and connect to it. You can get these from a, a variety of different manufacturers with a varying number of buttons included. I bought both the two and three button options, although it is worth noting that these support both single, double, and long press actions separately, meaning that each switch itself can technically support up to three actions. I say technically just because I've had trouble getting these to register the single press action alone. I think maybe because I'm holding the switch for just slightly too long, but I'm not 100% on that. Anyway, these are great for controlling all sorts of tech. Lights are the obvious one, but since you can map an almost limitless amount of actions, including multiple actions to these, well, you can pretty much do anything you'd like. Let's say that you have a, a motorized garage door, motorized blinds, smart lights, smart heating, door and window sensors, uh, CCTV cameras, all of that sort of stuff. Well, when you're, say, leaving the house, you could click one of these buttons you've stuck by the, the door or the, on the wall to by your garage door, which will turn down your heating, open the garage door itself, arm your door and window sensors, enable motion notifications on your cameras, even enable internal cameras to start recording, turn all your lights off, and close your blinds all from a single switch. Getting these set up in Home Assistant is relatively easy. I covered a lot more detail about how to set up devices and automations in, I think, episode three and four, so feel free to go check those out if you want a bit more detail. But a short synopsis is I set these up in a Home Assistant's own automations rather than the visual editor Node-RED, although I think I am actually going to recreate these automations in Node-RED to get a bit more functionality and uh, ease of use out of them. But anyway, uh, in the Home Assistant automations, I've set up the left button for the two switch option to literally just toggle the downstairs living room lights. On the right button on that, I actually have two different actions that happen uh, sort of in a queue as it were. So when you press that right button, it will turn off the living room lights and turn on the bedroom light, which is really handy for, you know, when you're going to bed, you can just click that one button and it will turn off the, the living room light as you're leaving. And by the time you get upstairs, the bedroom light will already be on. You don't need to search around in the dark for your light switch or anything, which is nice and handy. I did try some more advanced automations, like a sort of bedtime mode, where when you press one of the buttons on the upstairs switch, it will slowly decrease the brightness and the light over the course of 30 minutes as a nice sort of bedtime routine. But unfortunately, uh, I think I set it up slightly wrong, so it doesn't work out all that well. Uh, so like I said, I think I'll probably remake those sorts of ones in Node-RED, but for the time being, 
perfectly fine at least to control those switches. Now, if you have more conventional lights that you would rather not replace with smart bulbs, or you want to retain the standard functionality of your light switches, but without losing the, the smart control features like being able to turn them on remotely even with the switch set to off, then you might need to consider replacing your, well, actual in-wall light switches with smart versions. Those tend to be a little deeper than standard switches, meaning if you have a, a standardized 16 or 25 millimeter back box, you might need to consider upgrading either the size of the, the back box or use a spacer. Although neither of those options I'm personally happy with. Alternatively, you can keep using your existing switches and use a wire only switch that you sort of connect in the middle between the switch's output and the light. And then when you flick your physical switch, it's effectively just sending a signal to the smart switch to turn your light on. But even when your physical switch is set to off, you can still use Zigbee to command the uh, wire only switch to turn the light on anyway. That can be really useful when used in conjunction with a motion sensor like this one. I actually really like this little Aquara uh, one because it outputs both motion and illuminance or, or light level. That means that you can set up your automations to not only turn your lights on when it detects motion, but even or also when the light level in the room is low enough to require the light to turn on. That's what I've got set up with my living room hue bulb. When the sensor sees that the room has less than 10 lux and it detects motion for a full second, it will turn the bulb on. I added the for a full second bit just to make sure that it doesn't trigger on a false positives, things falling over, light cast around the room. Uh, I also haven't set it up to turn the light back off again, say like after five minutes of no further motion, because generally I don't want my tech to get in my way. I don't want it to be more frustrating than the standard option. Say you've just walked into the room, it's happily turned the lights on, then you sit down and you're just chilling watching TV, you don't then want it to turn the light back off just because you haven't moved around the room enough. Luckily, door sensors might actually be the solution to that problem. These stick to your door and its frame and it will fire an action whenever you open or close the door. This would be great for controlling the lights in a room. Just open the door to toggle their state or if it's more like a cupboard, then you can have it turn on when the door opens and then turn off when it closes again. These can be used all in conjunction with each other, like other switches or input devices, like device tracking, to know if you've left the house and therefore the system should do things like turn down the heating and turn off your lights, arm your security systems, that sort of stuff. I don't have any of those door window switches yet. I'm definitely considering picking them up though, because they should remove the need for a lot of physical switches. And I think that that's a good idea for having, well, the tech kind of get out of my way as much as possible. Of course, you can and probably should mix and match all of these to suit your house and your needs. Personally, I want to make my light switch or those light switch options work, especially for my hallway light, which is a, a two-way switch, but I don't think that I can without compromising my own requirements. The scene switchers work really well, as does the motion sensor, and like I said, I think I'll be picking up some of the door and window sensors, both for security and functionality. Hopefully this video has been useful, a useful look at some of your options and maybe gives you some ideas for your own smart homes and smart tech. If you're enjoying this series, I would love to, to uh, you, know, you let me know by obviously hitting the like button, uh, subscribing, making sure that you're up to date on all of these new videos and letting me know in the comments as well. 
If I've missed any types of switches that you think are, you know, must knows, must haves, uh, or you just want to mention anything about your own smart home setup or your own plans, anything like that, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And of course, any questions, leave those down there too. If you want to check out the rest of the smart home series, there's a whole load of other episodes. If you haven't already checked them out, feel free to do so on the end cards when they pop up. And if you want to check out any of the tech that I've been talking about here, there will be links in the description down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and when you watch this and pick some up yourself if you fancy. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, you can do so in a load of different ways through the, the YouTube join button where you get some cool rewards and become a YouTube member, or you can become a patron instead if you would rather. You can also pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a load of other designs that I made myself, or there's also a load of other affiliate links in the description for places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there, VPN options, and just a whole load of other stuff, so feel free to take a look. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Like I said, check out the rest of the Smart Home series on the end cards. And yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.